praise the Lord. We rise up to sing from our gospel hymns and songs, number 29. Gospel hymns and songs, number 29. I know who holds tomorrow. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from his sunshine, for his skies may turn to green. I don't worry about the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today, I walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. Every step is getting brighter. As the golden spears I climb, everybody's getting lighter. Every cloud is silver line. Yet the sun is always shining. There are no tears. We dim the eye at the ending of the rainbow where the mountains of the sky. I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty. For the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me. And the path that be my portion may be through the flame of love, for the presence goes beyond me uh, before me, and I'm covered with his blood. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand.
to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue for the reading now. Chapter 11 Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But all things of God. Judge in yourselves. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering? But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper, for in eating every one taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What, have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. 
Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Chapter 12 Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? but covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim, pray for grace that you will do as you have learned 
in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Hallelujah! As we worship the Lord and you tune your heart to heaven, God will meet you at the point of your needs in Jesus' name. Amen! You are God from beginning.
my soul. His blood covered my sin. I believe. Do you believe? I believe. My shame is taken away. All my pain is healed in the snake. I believe.
now bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world.
I was praying. Then I came across the message by the GS, which he preached that there's something, um, there's power in the midnight prayers. And I listened to that message and he prayed. After that prayer, I slept like a baby. The following morning, I was able to walk up and I walked from that day. I started walking by myself, feeding myself. And from that day to, to, to date, I am able to walk. I was down about six to seven months. I was unable to do anything. But today, I am strong. I can do anything. I can wash, I cook, do anything. I'm very active. And no one can know that I was having a partial stroke to this left part of my body. I can stretch up my hands. I can lift my legs. I can walk. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep checking yourself. Your own miracle is there. Next testifier. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, before I came here, I had a growth on my hand, on my right hand. I couldn't do things like lift heavy things or 
cook in Shima, I was failing to do a lot of chores. So today at the beginning of this service, I gave myself to God and I offered my diseases to God and I have nothing on my hands. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the condition she's describing is referred to as a ganglionic cyst. It tends to grow on the ankle joint and sometimes on the wrist joint and it tends to affect mobility in the hands. So, yeah. Praise the Lord. You can see her filled with joy and tears of joy rolling down. Something will happen today. Something extraordinary. Something powerful. Something miraculous. Raise up that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have never failed. You cannot fail. You will not fail. Today we come to you with great expectation. Today we come to you with faith in Christ. That works wonders. And we're asking tonight. Your wonders will come upon every life in Jesus' name. Problems will roll away. Problems will roll away. All those yokes will be broken. And every curse will be taken away. We know that you are going to do it. Put a smile on every face. Joy in every heart. Confront the miracle in everyone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you very much. God bless you. Wonderful to see your face again. Are you alright over there? Are you expecting something over there? No, I'm going to go back to the very beginning of creation. I want to go and see the miracle that happened on that first day. When God, the Almighty, decided He was going to make the earth. He was going to create everything. And then He decided he will create man. What kind of man did he create? What happened to that man that he created? And what happens today when the hand of God comes upon your life and remolds you and recreates you and remakes you? Genesis chapter 1. Genesis And I'm reading from verse 26. And said, let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. Now all the animals have been made already. And God didn't say, let us make man in the image of one of these animals. Lucifer was already there. Lucifer is the one He had turned to become Satan. God did not say, let us make man in the image of Lucifer. The angels already created. Which angels? Angels. Wonderful angels. God did not say, Let us make man in the image of an angel. He said, Let us make man in our image. And our and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over the cattle. And over the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. He created man in his own image. He created the woman in his own image. 
and God bless them. Tonight you are blessed. Somebody there said, Tonight you are blessed. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. And over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moved upon the earth. That's the story of the creation of man. I'm talking to you tonight on the miracle of a new creation. The miracle of a new creation. I read the passage already to you. God's original creation was beautiful and wonderful. Man's nature was like the nature of God. Man was number one, holy. Number two, man was happy. Number three, man was healthy. There was no sickness. There was no infirmity. There was no sin. There was no suffering. There was no sorrow. There was no oppression. Because God said we're making man. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Let us make man. In our image. In our image. In our life. And as God, the Almighty, had authority and dominion. Man had dominion and authority. That, that creation described and demonstrated for us the word holiness. H healthy. Healthy, no sickness at all, no infirmity at all. No orderliness. Everything was in order. Man at the top. The animals under them. The creation under them. The ones under them. Animals did not jump up to hurt the man. The vegetation did not resist the cultivation of man. When God created the universe, there was health. There was orderliness. There was love. Adam and Eve did not fight. Adam and Eve did not fight. like there was understanding between the man and the animals. And Abe Adam just stood there and said, this one is a lion, that one is a goat, that one is a sheep, that one is an animal. There was no resistance. Everything just worked amicably affection. Unfortunately, there was a possibility. There was no poison in the river. There was no poison in any plant. Only one thing God told them not to eat. He said, everything, just speak and eat. You, you cannot do that today. If you are hungry, now. You have to run back home and look for something to eat. You know, there's a lot of plant over here. You cannot go there now and eat something. At that time, there was no, was no poison. Incorruptibility in the creation of God. Because they said, we're going to make another heaven at the station of the earth. Everything was noble. 
There was nothing degrading. There was nothing oppressive. Everything completely noble. Everything was excellent. Let us make man in our image. After our likeness. Let them have dominion. Over the fish of the sea. Over everything that creepeth upon the earth. And so God created man. In his own dominion. image. After his likeness. There was selflessness. There was nobody that was selfish. Everybody you know you go your way. I go my way. Because that was the creation of God. There was satisfaction. You know, God gave everything. What else are we going to look for? Everything was under the authority and dominion of man. Satisfaction. That's the original creation of God. But then a strange thing happened. A stranger came from the outside. His name is Satan. He tempted our first parents. They sinned. They fell. When they fell, the creation turned around. When they sinned, things changed. The you see today it's been have been going normal being covered in lode day becomes abnormal yo wa di on to doju the person have been going straight forward being covered in lotara it becomes crooked awa di wogun wogun if something had been going up being covered in loss okay goes down nda to awa be se lo si le building something to ba ti nkan kan to ngbe nkan ro sin comes in it collapses ni ba te se ba wole awo pale that original creation e da akoko ye that god had made e ti olorun and when he made everything, he looked at everything and said everything was good, everything was very good. When the stranger came in, when the strange thing came in, honor oh, no. turned to humiliation. The honor that man had. Everything collapsed. It turned to humiliation. The obedience turned to obstinacy. Instead of man obeying God. Instead of animals obeying man. Instead of vegetation responding to the labor of our hand. Quality came in. Obstinacy came in. Obedience turned to obstinacy. Lord to lost instead of having normal love Christ like love divine love God's love it was not fleshly lost because things turned around when the stranger came in when Satan came in. Innocence turned to iniquity. I let be can your Jemmy Ma Owas do a DSA because now Satan had come in. Nitorique Satan it wale when you allow Satan could to come to your life. When you allow evil spirit to come to your life. When you allow evil spirit to come to your life. Something that be flowing normal and flowing well. Everything turns upside down. Go bon to tin son ni ro wo i ro se to n son gara go gba wa dori kodo. Nobility turn to nothingness. Eh eh ni tu e pa down to ni yi to ne ye awa de ni la son. Adam could not control Cain. Uh, Adam Cain just took something and killed his brother. And then God said, Cain, where is Abel thy brother? 
Oh, was it Nibonia a man was naughty to God. I any what Jolly could see a long What you asking me? I kill it on Berry, my brother's keeper. He may answer the story, Arakuni, maybe ability turned to naughtiness. Sorry, no, he, he, oh, what, oh, what, dear, and yeah, and then exaltation turned to excuses. Ah, I, a banning, a duty, Korea, oh, what, 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 and set up on high. And yet, your long, take best socket, or take beggar, began to make excuses. Oh, I don't know why that happened. It's a the woman you give me. Woman, why have you done this? Oh, it's not my fault. It's the serpent that beguiled me. The exaltation of man, everything turned to excuses. And selflessness turned to selfishness. And scarcity replaced sufficiency. Now man is suffering. And this is not the original creation. A miracle is going to happen to you. Somebody, am I talking to somebody there tonight? A miracle is coming your way. A miracle of the new creation. This was the situation of man. That's why Jesus Christ had to come. He didn't it. Jesus in Latin. Why? For God so loved the world. To the Lord of Fenna at the beg. The son of the begotten son. Oh, if you are my baby, that you so ever believe us in me. Ki eni keni ti obagba. Will not perish but have everlasting life. Ki oma ba sheg be sume ko ni ya ni bebu. With the stranger that came in. Belu a jodi ale jodi wale. With Satan that came in. Belu Satan ito wale wai. With sin that came in. Belu eshe to wale wai. And everything tumbled. Ki ongo go si dori ko do. Everything was spoiled. That's why Jesus Christ has now come. And he wants to reorganize everything in your life. Somebody there, you'll be reorganized today. He will touch your life today. He will touch your life today. That's why Christ has now come. And as Christ has come, he wants to do something. If you will allow him tonight, he will do something. I said, if you will allow him tonight, he will do something in your life. In Jesus' name. I'm looking at Hebrews chapter 12 verse 10. And we beru orike jila. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 10. But they verily for a few days just in doors after their own pleasure. Nitori want to wafun or jodi. But he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Almighty, the Almighty God look at the condition of man. And he saw that the original place he put us. The place of honor. The place of exaltation. The place of dominion. The place of power. And the place of happiness. And the place of holiness. And the place of hell. Where he put us. If it of you was we fail. Asubu he said Jesus only Jesus go and leech them up. Go and raise them up. Tonight, he will lift you up. Tonight, he will raise you up. How does he do that? I'm going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, the perception of his notable honor. The perception of of his notable honor. You need to understand the kind of honor the Lord wants to bring you to. What it was originally. Where he created us originally. The dominion and the authority he gave us originally. The perception, the understanding of that notable honor. 
preparation for his noticeable healing. Oni imura si lewa fun imula radare etu epe ale saki ese. The healing he gives you tonight, he your neighbors will see you and say something happened to you. He was at your phone, la le yi, and wara dugo re, wo so epe, in koko se le siye. The deliverance he gives you tonight, your neighbors will look at you and say, don't even tell me, I know about it already. Mbe ato ba da dugo yi, and wara dugo ya so pa, mati eti iso fun mo le ri nwa ye. The kind of healing that is noticeable. He rui wo son, eti ale saki ese. The kind of deliverance that is noticeable. He rui dande tanwe ni ale ri. The kind of recreation that people can tell, and people can see in your life. He rui se da ato, the preparation you will make The response you will give to the Lord So that what he wants to do Tonight is your night what are you? I said tonight is your night. That pain, he'll strike it up. That infirmity, he will strike it up. Those blind eyes will become bright in tonight. I will see. I said I will see. And out of that will cheer the mighty power of God will come upon your life. You'll come out in Jesus' name. There must be a preparation from your side. Our preparation for his noticeable healing. Number three, your portion in his new holiness. You have a portion in what God has provided through Christ. I was waiting for you. Amen. Amen. Portion, you will not miss it in Jesus' name. Let's come back to number one. The perception of his notable honor. Nini olare eti awon eniyan le re tan le saki esi come back to genesis chapter 1 e je ke apara sinu genesis ori kini here from verse 26 how can i say kerin din ni ogbon genesis chapter 1 verse 26 genesis ori kini ese kerin din ni ogbon and god said let us make man in our image olorun si pe je ki a da eniyan le awora wa our likeness gege bi ri wa let them have dominion over the fish of the sea ki won ki o si joba lori eja and over the fowl of the air. And over the cattle. And over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man. And then he tells us in his own image. In the image of God created he Male and female created he there. And God bless them. Somebody is blessed today and God bless them. Somebody there, you are blessed tonight and God bless them. curse will vanish away from your life. Every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted. Tonight will be uprooted from your life in Jesus' name. The perception of his notable honor. How do you understand? I'm telling you something here. If you know what God thinks about you, if you know what God desires for you, you will not fall for anything lower. You will not accept and say, okay, if this is all I have, then that's all right. You'll say, no. Before this life ends, everything God ordained for you, everything God has earmarked for you, and He says, in this new creation, this is what I have for you. You are going to possess it. 
Nothing will stop you. If you don't stop yourself. If you have the right perception. And you make the proper preparation. And you recognize your portion. I'm telling you from tonight, your life will be totally different. In the creation that God has made. What do you see? Number one. Honor through God. Honor through God. His honor will not come to your life anymore. His grace will not come to your life anymore. Degradation will not come to your life anymore. Number one, honor. I'm looking at Psalm 8. Psalm 8, verse 3. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? But thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. He was a darele die juangeli lo. Only a little lower than the angels. O darele die juangeli lo. And has crowned him with glory and honor. He was it if you go at your ladde li a de. Remember, it's not this not Genesis. This Psalm. This one, thousands of years after creation. And David was saying, I look at man at my own time. David was a pet more woe in the of God. In the plan of God. Glory and honor. Oh, go at your last. Tonight you are coming to that honor. You are coming to the creation of God. You are coming to his desire and his purpose and plan for you. And in verse 6, thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Under his feet. I'm going to make it personal. Under my feet. Under my feet. Evil powers under my feet. Sickness under my feet. Cancer under my feet. Ulcer under my feet. Premature death under my feet. Calamity under my feet. He has given us honor. That's why Christ came. Christ didn't come so I can just go to church. I can go to church without Christ coming. The people who are going to the synagogues without Christ coming. They were going to their temples without Christ coming. Christ came. So he can take you out of that place of dishonor. And bring you to the platform of honor. And bring all the things that were crawling upon you before, all the things destroying your life before, he'll put them under your feet from today. Did you hear what he said? Behold, I give unto you power. Over all the power of the enemy. And I said, you will tread on serpents and scorpions. And then he says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. He has come back from heaven so that the original creation will be reproduced in your life tonight. Honor through God. Obedience to God. When, you know, as Christ came, and then he comes into our hearts, he puts a magnet in our hearts. That you just, you are magnetized 
ties to the side of the Lord. There is a desire to obey God. There is a pleasure in obeying God. When God created another man Eve, that was what was in their heart. They just love God. And they love the commandments of the Lord. Number one, honor to God. Number two, obedience to God. Number three, likeness to God. Let us create man in our image, in our likeness that he is the creature resembled the creator the son resembles the father the offspring resembled the parents likeness unto God and that's why it says that as he is so are we in this present world the next one is the image of God that was man after our likeness after our image so that the very heart of God the very mind of God the very nature of God that's what Adam and Eve are that's what they lost and that's why Jesus Christ has come he wants to restore us back to what we lost in Adam honor through God obedience to God likeness to God the image of God. Nature of God. The nature of God. The nature of dominion. The nature of power. The nature of righteousness. The nature of truth. The nature of truthfulness. The nature of holiness. Because that's how God created man. The perception we have. Some people do not understand why Jesus came. Because he looked at every couch. He looked at every step. And he looked at every item. That man should resemble God. He lost everything. And Jesus Christ has now come. So that he will restore you to that nature of God. He exploits like God. He exploits like God. Look at Adam. Can you think of one man and one woman controlling that whole garden? Controlling all the earth. And he told Adam and Eve subdue so the earth not just the garden that man could go anywhere before he fell this word was with authority. Before he fell, lions were not a threat to him. Before he fell, crocodiles were not a threat to him. Before he fell, he had exploits like God. And that's what the Lord is bringing us to. The people that do know their God. And the people that do know Christ. And Christ pulls you out of your disgrace and degradation. He pulls you out Power will come into you. You will not be afraid of little malaria. Oh, ni wama berui back. You will not be afraid of cockroach spirit. Oh, ni wama berue emi anyo. You will not be afraid of reptiles. Oh, ni wama beru bobo awama ne tabia wanda. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Tori pe ti olu ani le ati e kuinure. This is my father's territory. Ah, esi e wo baba mi. 
and anywhere you are authority and dominion you go to the village authority and dominion anywhere you go and you're not hiding yourself somewhere there are some bad people there they want to kill me no nobody will kill you after tonight I said after tonight in the day and in the night you will do exploits in Jesus name and then supernatural through God the supernatural through God in the original creation man was the representative of heaven on earth it was uh, the sub headquarters of God here on earth. And man was to be the administrator of God here on earth. The plan of heaven was to be carried out on earth by the man. And the power of heaven was given to him to carry that out. Supernatural from God. The supremacy in God. The supremacy that he had in God. That's what Adam and Eve had at the beginning. And then there was a fall. And man now became helpless, hopeless, sick, suffering, sorrowful, until Christ came. And Christ is asking you tonight, do you want to come back to where you were before? Yaba is not answering me. I said, do you want to come back to what we had before? We're coming back. I said we're coming back. Courage is coming to your heart. Life is coming into you. Authority is coming to you. You will not continue in weakness. You will not continue in discouragement. You will not continue in fear. You will not continue in poverty. Christ has come. Christ died for you on the cross of Calvary. Looking unto Christ. The author and finish off your faith. Go for the joy that was sent before him. He despised the shame. He endured the cross. So that he'll take you out of that place you are. He'll take you up. You are coming up tonight. Our preparation for his noticeable health. He's going to heal you. Somebody there said he's going to heal you. Get ready, it's coming. Miracle of healing. Miracle of salvation. Miracle of deliverance. It's coming your way in Jesus' name. Our preparation. What preparation do you make? And if you will prepare tonight, I can show you a miracle is coming your way. What preparation do you make? Humble yourself before the Lord. Humble yourself before the Lord. It's in Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. Each humble yourselves before the Lord. Oh, open the 
door of your heart to the Lord. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door and he says, Jesus, I want you. Jesus, I desire you. Jesus, I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in unto him. I will sup with him. I will fellowship with him. You come to the Lord. You say, today I open the door of my heart. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come in and forgive me. Come in and cleanse me. Come in and take my sins away. Humble yourself before the Lord. Open the door of your heart to the Lord. Leave the old life and cleave to the new life. For this shall a man leave father and mother and cleave unto his wife. He wants to be your bridegroom. He wants to be your husband. He wants to be your healer. He wants to be your lord and master. You leave the old master and you cleave unto the Lord. You leave sin and you cleave to the Savior. You leave darkness and cleave to the light. You leave evil and cleave to his grace. Incline your ears unto the Lord. I come to point number three. I'm talking to somebody now. I said I'm talking to somebody now. What are you there? Are you hearing? Are you going to answer the Lord? When he calls me, I will answer. He wants to lift me up. He wants to forgive me. He wants to set me free. When he calls me, I will answer. Who will answer over there? I said who will answer over there? Lord, Call your people. Call them out of that prison. Bring them to the palace. Call them out of that dungeon. Bring them to dominion. I know you will answer. Something good will happen to you. Your portion in the new, in its new holiness. Look at this. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah Isaiah chapter 43. I'm reading from verse 18. He did the old creation. He made the old creation. But Adam and Eve fell. And we fell in them and with them. But now he says, I'm going to do it all over again. He will do it all over again in your life. See what he wants to do. Isaiah 43. Verse 18. Remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Somebody there. I said somebody there. Almighty God says tonight, tonight, this night. I will do a new thing. And then it says, now it shall spring forth. When is your miracle? When is your healing? When is your salvation? When is your lifting up? It says now it shall spring up. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. And rivers in the desert. The Lord has said your time has come. What will he do? What has he promised to do? So as to bring God to watch Adam and Eve lost. Number one, a new heart. 
new heart. The heart is the center of your life. The heart is the source of your thinking. The heart is the fountain of your strength. The heart is the starting point of your progress. If the heart is weak, your life will be weak. If your life, if your heart is downtrodden and trampled upon, your life is downtrodden and, tr and trampled upon. If your heart is timid and weak, your if, life will be timid and weak. If your heart is sinful, your life will be sorrowful and your life will be sinful. And he says, come to me today. I'll give you a new heart. Somebody there. A new heart is coming. I said, a new heart is coming. A new life. A new instrument. A new instrument. What are you there? Are you still there? Look up. I said, look up. If it rains, the rain will not cancel your miracle. You will not go and hide somewhere. Because God is about to distribute miracles. Your portion is coming. Your portion is coming. What are you there? It will get to you. It, you will get to it. From the time of John the Baptist until now. The kingdom of God suffered violence. And the power then take it by force. Nothing will hinder you tonight. A new heart. Give me a good amen. A new obedience. Another amen. A new lie. Another amen. What's the next thing there? Tell me. A new instrument. Uh, look at look at you. Look at your portion here. Say, I'm looking at my portion now. I can't hear you. I said chapter 41. I say chapter 41. I say I'm looking at verse 15. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. I'm going, I'm going to read that again so that I can hear whether you are the one I'm talking to or not. He says, Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having tears. And thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills a charm. Thou shalt fan them and the wind will carry them away. And the wind will scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord. And shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. A new instrument. What is he? Where is she there? All those mountains will vanish away. A new name. A new name. The Lord is going to give you a new name. You are not a defeated man anymore. You are, you are a person in dominion from now on. A new name. Behold, I give my name unto you. Whatsoever ye shall ask or bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. A new example. A new example. Because Christ has died for us. Leaving us an example. That we should walk 
after his steps. What does that mean? The way he dealt with sin, he gave you an example, deal with sin that way. The way he deal, he dealt with Satan, he gave you an example, deal with Satan that way. When Satan comes and he wants to bind you up and oppress your life. Uh, Satan, leave me alone, leave me alone. What have I done? It's only me you are coming to. And you don't allow me. Stop that. And deal with that Satan and say, Satan, get thee behind me. He'll get away from you. The way he dealt with sickness and said, Be thou healed. He has given you an example, a new example. And you come, and you come in authority. I have the name of the Lord. I have the promise of the Lord. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, they will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And tonight, you will recover in Jesus' name. The word is in your mouth. The name is in your mouth. The spirit is in your heart. The authority is in your spirit. And the anointing that breaks the yoke is given to you. He has given us an example. A new example. Deal with sin like he dealt with sin. Deal with Satan like he dealt with Satan. Deal with sin sickness like he dealt with sickness and deal with evil spirits like he dealt with evil spirits I have the victory I have the victory as a new spirit a new spirit the spirit of a conqueror the spirit of courage the spirit of power the spirit of authority the spirit of fearlessness that anywhere you go but today you will be in authority all power all authority is given unto me in heaven and on earth go ye therefore you have that new spirit it says in Ezekiel chapter 11 and in verse 19 a new spirit will I put within you a new source of supply a new source of supply Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 my God shall supply. My God shall supply. My God shall supply. All your needs. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. A new source of supply. Everything is available for you. I said everything is available for you. It will heal you. He will forgive you. He will set you free. He will save your soul. He will turn your life around. He will do something good in your life. But you need to prepare. You need to prepare. Lord, I come. I humble myself. Lord, I come. I open the door of my heart. Lord, I come. I leave the past. I cleave unto the Lord. Lord, I come. I climb my heart to the Lord. Lord, I come. I nail all my sins to the cross of Calvary. Lord, I come. I escape from perdition and destruction. Lord, I come. I seek the Lord while he may be found. Lord, I come. I surrender all to Christ. Once you do that, that new thing will begin in your life. 
Father. Yes, bowed and eyes closed. Yes, bowed and eyes closed. The Lord is coming your way right now. The time of forgiveness has come. The time of lifting up has come. And the time of salvation has come. And it's going to do something new. Something you never knew before. A new miracle is coming upon your life. Yes, bowed and eyes closed. If you are telling the Lord, oh Lord, do it for me tonight. Oh Lord, do it for me tonight. You raise up your hand. You indicate to the Lord. Lord, I am here. Lord, I am here. I want it now. If you are raising up your hand, you will stand up. Why did they do stand up, stand up for did Jesus? Did they do did they do also, okay, did they do you are raising up your hand. Oh, now one yes, and okay. you are saying, Jesus, also, okay, Jesus, you and I today will be connected. I leave the past, I come to my Savior. I leave my sin, I come to Christ. I leave darkness, I come to the light. You raise up your you stand up. If you are standing up and you mean it, Take whatever you have, take whatever you have, hold everything in your hand and come right to the front here. Come over here. Come. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you. Come unto me. Come unto me. All you that labor and a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest in your soul. Rest in your spirit. A new life is coming. You are going to leave the past. All the sins of the past, you are going to leave them. All the gangs of the past, you are going to leave them. All the lying of the past, you are going to leave everything. All the evil of the past, you are going to leave. All the wickedness of the past, you are going to leave. And you come and cleave to the master, to the savior, to the Lord. People coming, is calling you. You humble yourself before the Lord. As you come, as you come, as you come. He says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. So while you are there, just close your eyes and say, Lord, I will not be proud anymore. I know I'm a sinner. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Let him, the Lord. Let him hear the voice of humility. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. The Lord is calling you. And the Lord is saying, tonight can be the night of upliftment. Tonight will be the night of hope. Holding you up. Everything we lost in the first Adam. We want to regain Adam in Christ. And tonight is the beginning. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Older person can come. Elderly person can come. Aged person can come. And the young people can come. Lord, Lord I come. Open the door of your heart. And say, Lord, here I am. Come in to stay. Come in and take my sins away. Leave the past. And cleave to the Savior. Incline your ear to the watch of the Lord. And do what he has told you to do. And put all your sins together. Nail them to the cross of Calvary. Tell the Lord. He will answer your prayer. He will save your soul. He will take your sins away. He will change your life. A new thing will come to you. It's going to happen now. I said it's going to happen now. I said it's going to happen now. Raise up that hand. Raise it up very well. You're going to pray after me. When we finish your prayer with my minister uh, walking with me here. You say it aloud and say from the depth of your heart. Almighty God, I thank you today. Today is a new day. Lord, I come. I humble myself before you. 
I know I am a sinner. You are my Savior. Lord, I call upon you. Forgive my sin. I open up my heart. Call me. Set me free. Come in. Save my soul. I leave the past. I cleave to the Lord. I will stay with the Lord. Lord, I pray. All your word I have heard. I incline my heart to that word. I nail my sins to the cross of Calvary. Take them away. Tonight. Tonight. I escape from destruction. Tonight. I have come to seek your face. Tonight. I surrender my heart. I surrender my life. I surrender my will. Unto the almighty God. Receive me Lord. Take me Lord. Save me Lord. Lord I believe. Lord I believe. Lord I believe. My sins are forgiven. I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. In Jesus name I pray. Awa ile de Yoruba e gba tele n bayi Olorun e je ka soro so ke Olorun mo dupe lowo yin fun ojo oni mo dupe lowo yin fun oro yin mo ti gbo oro yin mo si ri ara mi gege bi elese mo nje wo awon ese mi fun yin gbogbo awon igbi aye ateyin wa gbogbo ese ateyin wa gbogbo awon iwa buburu mi atijo mo nje wo won fun yin mo si npin ninu okan mi lati ko gbogbo ese mi sile mo n gba jesu oluwa gege bi oluwa ati olugbala mi mo si ti pinu pe lati oni lo won o ma to yin leyin won o ma se ife yin won o gbe gbe aye mi fun yin jesu oluwa mo sile kun okan mi sile e wa wo inu okan mi e wa ji aye mi pada e wa so aye mi dotun agbara atore ofe ti ma fi gbe gbe aye to wu yin lati oni lo e je ko wo inu okan mi mo dupe tori pe e ti se mo dupe tori pe ati gba mi la mo dupe tori pe e ti dariji mi ni oruko jesu ni mo gbadura I'm going to pray for you now. Raise up your two hands in surrender. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have called your people and they have come you will not fail according to your promise. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Save them in Jesus' name. Let your spirit be a witness in their hearts. Their sins have been forgiven. Write their names in the book of life in heaven. Lift them up. Change their lives. They will never be the same again. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Praise the Lord, the Lord has saved you. Praise the Lord. Okay, hallelujah. That miracle is coming. He said, a new creation. A new power. A new healing. A new deliverance. Is coming upon your life right now. You know, when God created, He just said, let there be. Let there be light and there was light. Let there be ocean. There was ocean. Let all the waters gather to one place and it was so. And now his son is going to do a creative work in your life. Once he says sickness, go away. It's gone. 
Blind eyes be opened and begin to see. It happens immediately. Let man rise up and walk. It happens. And when you hear the final amen. You check up yourself. The miracle is there already. If you need healing, you raise up your hand. If you need deliverance, you raise up your hand. Whatever challenge it is, you want the Lord to take away, just raise up your hand over there. And lay the other hand upon yourself. And then when you hear the final amen, that means the miracle is confirmed already. Almighty God, we come to you with faith. We come in the new anointing that breaks every yoke. We come standing on the promises that cannot fail. We come in the confidence of the manifestation of your power. I come upon every person here. On behalf of every sick person, every oppressed person, every afflicted person there, and Lord, I pray, touch and heal them in Jesus' name. I command that sickness in your body, come out in Jesus' name. I command that affliction and oppression of the enemy of the devil. Come out in Jesus' name. That yoke is broken from your life. You are free. You are set free. Receive your freedom in Jesus' name. That madness, that insanity, that evil spirit, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. All the disturbances in your system, in your head, in your mind, because of marijuana and because of all those things you have been eating and drinking and smoking before, I cancel them. You are free in Jesus' name. The person that is having swelling in the body, in the neck, in the head, in the armpit, in the leg, I command the swelling, come out in Jesus' name. That cancer, I command you, dry up, be healed in Jesus' name. Also be healed in Jesus' name. The pain of arthritis and stiffness in your joints be healed in Jesus' name. Issue of blood there dry up in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Coughing out blood, be healed in Jesus' name. And anywhere the fire of the devil is burning in your head, anywhere I command that fire to stop right now in Jesus' name. Sickle cell anemia be healed in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes and dim eyes, I command right now, be healed in Jesus' name. That person has been stroke or paralysis, let the power of Christ come there right now. That power that raises up the lame, I send that power in your joint, in your waist, in your muscle, in your nerves. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Those 
Lord, I pray for every kind of miracle, every kind of deliverance, every kind of healing, every kind of signs and wonders, everywhere to the right, to the left, to the center, to the back. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. You're delivered in Jesus' name. Hold on to that miracle right now. It is done. It is done. Confirm it in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You got it. I said, Amen. You got it. Amen. It has happened. Check up yourself. The miracle is right there.